using the following quadratic equation to rewrite it in vertex form. So in vertex form, I'm going to start by taking the constant and moving it to the opposite side. So to move a negative 16 over, I'm going to add 16. The second step is I'm going to factor out the leading coefficient if it's different than 1. So in doing so, to achieve this answer, you're going to go negative 2 divided by negative 2 is a 1, bring down the x squared. Negative 12 divided by negative 2 is 6, bring down the x, and here's the blank from the 16 going to the opposite side. Okay, now I'm going to take the b term, positive 6, and I'm going to divide it by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. There's a plus in front, so a plus remains in front, and this quantity is squared. The next step is filling in this number, this numerical value right here. Whatever this number is, you're going to square it. So 3 squared is 9. Now here's the tricky part. Draw an arrow from the negative 2 to the 9. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. So I've just applied negative 18 to the right. I must all of also apply it to the left. When I combine like terms, positive 16 and negative 18 is negative 2. Now move the negative 2 to the opposite side. And I can do that by adding 2. And I've just rewritten the equation from standard form into vertex form. So what does this reveal? I see three things it reveals. One is it's going to reflect across the x-axis. You're welcome to write it like that. You also can write it as this parabola is going to open downward. That's the same way of saying reflects across the x-axis. I can see because this number here is greater than 1, it is going to vertically stretch by a factor of 2. And the last thing is vertex form shows the vertex. So the vertex for this problem is negative 3, positive 2. Okay, I'm going to take the same original equation we were given up above. It was in standard form. And now you're asked to rewrite it in factored form. So the original equation was y equals negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 16. It does not say to solve. It just simply says rewrite it in factored form. Make sure that you understand that part. If you solve it, even if it's done correctly in solving, I would have to count it wrong. Okay, factored form. I see a negative 2, I see a negative 12, and a negative 16. Each one of these is divisible by 2, and in fact by negative 2. So let's factor out a negative 2. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is 1, bring down the x squared. Negative 12 divided by negative 2 is 6, bring down the x. Negative 16 divided by negative 2 is positive 8 only worry about the trinomial inside. So some students in the past have asked me, when it's time to do bottoms up, do I use the negative 2 from the original or do I use the 1? We are only focused on this portion of the equation. 1 times 8 is 8. So I'm thinking of two terms that multiply to equal 8 and combine to give you 6. And that would be x plus 4 and x plus 2. And I don't have to do bottoms up because there's a 1. Remember, we're not worried about this right now. There's a 1. So I bring down the negative 2, and this is the originally correct equation rewritten in factored form. Now, I know on the next page it's going to ask, what does this reveal? So I'm just going to write it here where I can see it. It reveals, again, two ways to say this. It reveals that you can say it reflects across the x-axis, or you can say it opens downward. The 2, not the negative 2, it's a 2. This negative is now done. We've already explained that. The 2 
says that it's going to be stretched. So we're going to vertically stretched by a factor of 2. If you would say vertically stretched by a factor of negative 2, that would be incorrect. And the last one is it shows the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts occur at negative 4, 0 and at negative 2, 0. So I know that's part D. I just chose to write it here, where you can also see the equation to do that. Okay, let's go ahead and graph this. We know that our x-intercepts are at negative 4 and negative 2. We know we have a vertex at negative 3, 2. And notice that in the original standard form, we can see that we have a y-intercept of negative 16. Okay. Give me one second. Okay, so let's start with the y-intercept. I can see it's not possible to go all the way down to negative 16 to graph the y-intercept. If it was possible, then I would ask for you to, to identify the y-intercept on the graph. All right, I'm going to start by graphing the vertex of negative 3, 2. So negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 2. I know that your line of symmetry is going to go through here. And I know that we have x-intercepts at negative 4 and negative 2. And again, way down here at negative 16, we would have a y-intercept. <clears throat> so, just as a reminder before I start doing domain, range, or end behavior, this arrow means that as you go to the left, you're being pulled down. That's why it's moving down at a diagonal. And again, as you go to the right, you are also moving down. That's why it's a diagonal on the right. So the domain, there's no limit how far this can go to the left or to the right. Range, uh, we start with the smallest number first. There's no limit how far it goes down. There is a limit how high it goes. It goes up as far as y is equal to 2. End behavior. As you go to the left, as you go to the left, your function is headed down. As you go to the right, your function is also headed down. 